Before I go, I call a locksmith to change the locks. So now I'm in Italy, getting a lot of angry texts from my wife. What's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with another story post. Guys, I'll put this up on the screen if you want to check it out. What? You guys read the title? Let's just get into this one. So, AITA for changing the locks on my cheating wife and going on a holiday. <laughs> Bear with me, guys. Need input. My soon-to-be ex-wife and me have been in a relationship for seven years. We are all too well-off people, career-wise. My wife has a leader position in marketing. Lots of social events at clubs. Well-paid job. I am living my dream as a firefighter. However, I have had a crap load of inheritance. So even though she is making seven figures a year, we are equals money wise. We have been unable to get kids, though at first, but after a while, we got used to the idea of living a double income, no kids relationship. We are focusing on work and each other every three months, enjoying at least two weeks or more of exotic holidays. Anyway, to the point. Last couple of weeks, my wife have started receiving text messages at night. I am a fast sleeper, and normally my wife will use her phone in bed. She will also pass gas in bed when she thinks I am asleep. Oh, okay. I find this funny. So I am pretending to be sleeping and never mention. However, last two weeks increasing frequency of texting seemingly going on for hours at first i slept through but after some days i kept on feeling the vibrations of her phone and started wondering one night i was asking her early on who she is texting she just answered work stuff honey and smiled i fell asleep or so she thought and she kept texting while giggling excitedly for hours one of the last days i couldn't help myself in a moment of weakness, I took her phone while she was while she was out of the room and snooped. I am a pretty crappy guy doing this, I know. It's just that this was something entirely new. She had the same job the last four years. Lo and behold, some guy she is texting with is sending pretty graphic pictures of himself. Way bigger than mine. That makes it worse. My wife is sending extremely graphic text and pictures back. I didn't know what to do, feeling the need to puke and all that crap falling apart around me. I did what I do best, pretended to sleep when my wife got back and lied awake all night listening to her text. Next morning, I fake sleeping as she goes into work. I don't know what to do. I feel hatred and bitterness and sadness. I am not up for the confrontation. This was four days ago. So seeing I was on leave period for work for two weeks, I go on and order plane tickets to Naples in Italy. Before I go, I call a locksmith to change the locks. This is my apartment and I can do what I want. My wife still has all her clothes and some important work stuff in the apartment. I hurry out, even taking a flight with a stop over in Canada to be able to get the F out faster and before she gets back from work. So now I'm in Italy, getting a lot of angry texts from my wife and her side of the family. I responded one text with something along the lines of, have fun with Mr. Big D, F off. Before I turned off my phone, she wrote that we need to talk and sort things out. Am I the a-hole for isolating myself on another continent for two weeks? I just want to drink a lot of red wine, eat pizza, and escape reality. Do I have to answer? 
I mean, I won't, but am I the a-hole for escaping my problems this way? Thank you for all the advice. Wow, let me get my thoughts. Man. <laughs> wow, she cheated on the wrong guy. Um, my My whole thing is this. I don't want you to get in trouble. And I say that because you're, this is your wife and you guys share this place together. I don't know how much trouble you can get in for locking her out like that. You know, um, at the same time, I have no sympathy for your cheating wife. You know, I, 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 I love picturing her coming home to change locks and can't get inside and is going to mess up her going to work and all that stuff and frustrate her. I, I, it brings me joy thinking about it, you know, but the consequences is going to have on you. I don't know, you know, and that, that's what sucks. You know, I, I love the petty revenges where you can just do something and, you know, it doesn't harm the other person, but it makes it, it's inconvenient. You know, and it doesn't get you in trouble. I love those. Um, but I don't know. But you do have an edit and an update here. So let's go ahead and check this out. Edit, update. Thank you all for your advice and input. I really appreciate it all. I agree with many of you are saying she is also a tenant. And it was a effing stupid move on my part to lock her out like that. I was and still am ticked off and wasn't very rational in my acts and thinking. It didn't occur to me at the time that this could come back and bite me. I have gone through hellish logistics to get the door opened and she will go to the apartment to clean out her stuff today before the door is locked again. Just to clarify, this is my place. I covered all expenses seeing they are small, bought the place and it's all paid off. And money wasn't an issue. So for her rights to keep staying, I don't know. Anyway, she accepted moving, seeing I brought all my money with me into the marriage before we were married. I think things would not be too problematic, though. In any case, she earns a lot, so I doubt she would push for getting a piece of my assets. Again, thank you all for all the input. It's harder than I ever imagined to think clearly when in a situation like this. I will now go to sleep after a jet lag night with a lot of phone calls to locksmiths and friends. Wow. Let's check out the comments. Let's see what they said in the comments. Someone said, you should ask about this in Reddit legal advice. I'm just not going to ask though. If she's been living there, she has a legal right to get in. So if she gets in, turns on the water in the bathroom, plugs the bathtub and walks out, do you have flood insurance? Because something similar happened to a guy across the street from me. A water faucet running for a weekend is about $20,000 worth of damages. Anyway, have a nice vacation. Yeah, it sucks, man. Like, oh man, it's like, and I hear what he's saying. And it just makes me think about a time where I lived with someone and I tried to get my things and I couldn't and I had moved out the day before and they made it hard for me to get my things. I even tried to get the police involved to help me out and they told me it was nothing they could do. Oh man, it's, it's very frustrating. I feel like things are just different when the shoe is on the other foot. Like if it's a man, oh, he has, she can do what she wants, you know, but if it's a guy who locked his wife cheating wife out oh why would you do that to her oh that's not fair she can sue you all this is, i don't know i don't know yeah let's let's continue op yeah well crap change the locks though she is not the psycho destructive type thank god i hope yeah let's hope she's not someone else said and her driver's license likely shows that address so what is to stop her from calling a locksmith and saying she locked she's locked out of her place oh uh. OP, you're right. See update above. Thank you for the input. And OP is down here saying like, I'm not going to lie, guys. D move on my part. Someone says, but she's a far bigger a-hole than you are. 
Running away to Italy with no notice was a bit extreme, even for this circum even for this circumstance. Don't get me wrong, I hate cheaters with the burning passion of a thousand newly formed stars and find this whole thing amusing, but at least box up her crap and put it out of the house before changing the locks. She had to get a locksmith to even move out. Haha. <laughs> Yeah, guys, what do you think about this? Is he an a-hole for doing what he did? Is he justified for doing what he did? Let me know. Let me know in the comments, and I'll catch you guys at the next one. I, a 25-year-old male, just broke up with my cheating ex, who's 23-year-old female, and she has come crawling back. Should I go for pre-booked trip? Oh, uh, you guys had a trip plan and she cheated, huh? And huh, let's just get into this. Hi, guys. So my ex significant other and I were exclusive for about 10 months and she just went on an overseas internship in San Francisco for three months. She'd also signed up for an exchange program in Barcelona after that. So effectively, she would have been overseas for six months. We pre-booked a trip on the third month to meet up in the middle. Two weeks before she left, I was asking if she'd want it to break up so that she can go after her fun and explore, and I wouldn't be constantly suspicious and distracted. She assured me to have faith and that everything would be okay. So I did have faith, I believed. The first week she went over to the US, Everything was just fine. The second week, she moved into an apartment where there were two other guys and one other girl who shared a room with her. After the first night, she spent clubbing with her new flatmates. She texted me saying that she was starting to feel trapped by our relationship and she wanted to have freedom. But she also knew she wanted a long-term relationship with me. So she was asking if I was okay with an open relationship. Wow. You know the funny thing? I bet you she, I bet you she brought this up after she slept with one of her roommates. At that point, I said, no, this was not what I signed up for. And I'm not going to find someone else just because you want to do it for yourself. So she said she needed some space to sort out her thoughts. And she ghosted me. During this period, I became depressed and paranoid that I was going to lose her. At the end of that timeout, she came back saying that she chose to be attached. I was overjoyed and told her I'd book a trip to the US to spend our anniversary, one year anniversary together. But at this point, she kept saying she had her own life there and I'd be disappointed if I went up to find her because she had her own life to live and I'd be expecting to spend time with her so she said, don't come up. We can just do a call on our anniversary. And she'd only meet me on our pre-booked trip three months later. After this, she started becoming cold and distant and giving me one word replies. At first, I thought, you know, she's gaining her independence and living her own life. It's all great. Whenever I was asking if she was interested in any of the guys there, she always assured me that she hadn't met anyone. And I was lucky that she hadn't. I later told her off and said, you are lucky to have me as a boyfriend and I'm lucky to have you as a girlfriend. So don't ever say such a thing. Dude, she is toying around with you, man. Then on the weekend of the end of her first month there, my mom's phone went dead and she needed a spare. I switched on my spare phone, which I'd lent my ex before she left for the US and realized her Facebook was still logged in. Her Facebook messages came in and out of curiosity, FYI, I've never checked her messages before up till here. I opened the chat on top from this dude. To my horror, I saw a wall of flirtatious text messages where my ex would ask the guy to come over and cuddle and ask him to go on dates with her. I was devastated and seriously hoped that the worst of it was cuddling. I confronted her the next day and she confessed that she'd been sleeping with her flatmate whenever the other flatmates weren't around. <laughs> it started when she realized I wasn't going to accept an open relationship. So to avoid me from getting suspicious, she just decided to go behind my back. She said that it was just meaningless sex. It's like smoking or drinking. It's just one of my vices. Well, she didn't have to lie about it. She told me she was done with the flinging when we got together. So this was not what I signed up for. After all this had happened, 
I still seriously contemplated giving her a second chance. But I have to say it wasn't meant to be. She didn't seem remorseful and said when she made the decision to cheat, she already made her choice. In the time I briefly told her I would give her a second chance, I felt deeply insecure and didn't think she'd put in the effort to make our relationship work again. If I didn't find out, she would have just kept me on a hook as her backup plan. Yep. I was not going to prioritize someone who kept me as an option. So in the end, I decided to break up with her. She was going to be there, living in the same house as the guy. And I'm halfway around the world here. It's now day two of the breakup and she's come crawling back, saying she misses me and wishes that I'd still go for the trip we pre-booked. Should I still go? Even if I could just treat her as a friend, FWB over the trip? What do you guys think? So to sum everything up, exclusive relationship for 10 months. She was going overseas for six months. We decided to do LDR and meet after three months. One month into the LDR, I found out that she'd been sleeping with her flatmate since week two into the LDR. Just broke up. She's come crawling back asking if I would still visit her over the trip. I miss her, but I am not sure if it's worthwhile, even if I can see her as a FWB now. Should I go? Let me give my thoughts. First and foremost, man, this girl is dust. Forget about her. She is grimy. I guarantee you. When she hits you up with, hey, do you want to have an open relationship? Or could we do this? Could we do that? She had already slept with that guy. So you had the right mindset. You had the right mindset of, I should just break up with her now. You should have. You should have just cut that off right then and there. Because I guarantee you, she probably had talked to her roommates before even meeting them. They knew who, She knew who her roommates were going to be. Ooh, I like him. The flirting probably started a long time ago. Way before she went there. So trust me, dude, it was premeditated. And she was going to a whole different country, a whole different place. Of course she's going to do her dirt. She's leaving home and she gets to go somewhere else where it's a, it's a, um, what happens here stays here type of deal. Oh yeah, she's going to get buck wild. And that's what she did. And it's just that one guy you know about. Probably, it probably were, were more dudes. I'm quite sure. But smart dude, man. Um, I'm glad you cut it off in the end. You said, you know, you just can't do it. Because, man, you know who she is. She showed you who she was. Believe her. She showed you exactly who she was. Believe her. And move on. As far as the trip, um, dang. So it sounds like the trip, let's just assume trip is paid for. You can't get your money back, whatever. Would I go on the trip? Hey, why not? If it's paid for and everything, why not? And if you have the opportunity, if you feel like you want to use her as uh, friends with benefits or whatever, it's up to you. Or you can just go like, look, we already had this planned. You do you. I'm going to do me while we're on this trip. Um, I don't want nothing to do with you because I'm disgusted by you because you destroyed me. Do that. If the trip's paid for. I'd go on the trip, man. I wouldn't just say, no, screw the trip, lost my money. Nah, I'm going on a trip and I'm going to have some fun. Enjoy yourself. But I definitely would try. I would not let her manipulate me into get, getting into a relationship. I'm so sorry. You're the best thing that ever happened to me. I don't know what I was thinking. Take me back. Do not do it. Do not take her back. But let's go ahead and check out these comments. Someone said, you should tell her you're not going. Then turn it into a solo trip and don't meet up with her. Sleeping with an ex is messy, especially if they cheated. Just know. Why would you even want to get intimate with her again? Could you just go on Tinder? He's right. This person is right. Um, It could be messy. I'm, I will definitely tell you, do not get back into a relationship with her. But at the same time, too, keep this in mind. If, you're, if you do sleep with her, she could take that as, well, I slept with you. You should forgive me and take me back. And if you say no, you might tick her off. You just might tick her off to the point to where <laughs> she might do some lying. So, like I said, if the trip is paid for, go on the trip and just be like, yo, I'm going to do me, you do you. He replied to that. Ha ha ha. Well, the sex was good. So I guess the so I guess a part of me still craves it. But you're right. It'll probably be messy. Someone else said, you'd stay with her in the same flat with the dude she's been effing. 
You don't think that's going to be awkward for for all of you? You don't worry her flatmate is going to act like a jerk to you? And you trust your cheating liar ex to be gracious hostess for your visit? If you can't get your airfare refunded exchange for a different flight, go to San Francisco and see the sights. If you can f afford a hotel, I agree. And don't tell your ex that you're still going. Just skip the visit ex part of the trip and have fun in San Francisco. Maybe see if a friend can join you. Yeah, okay, so I was kind of... All right. Okay. So I understand. So the whole plan was for you to go visit her in San Francisco and stay with her. Heck no. That's, that's definitely a no, no with the, with the guy living there, dude, I can tell you this. She probably tried to get a relationship out of that roommate. And he looked at her like, no, nah, I just wanted to smash. She wants to make him jealous. Yeah. I didn't know you were going to go have to stay there with her. Yeah. That's messy. Yeah, don't do that. If you can't go by yourself and stay in a hotel and enjoy the enjoy San Francisco, seeing the sights, like he said, it, don't go then. It, it's stupid. Like, I wouldn't go stay with her. Heck no. Uh, he responded. He said, I canceled the San Francisco leg because I know it's effed. We still have a trip to Scotland where, it, where it'll just be the two of us. Thoughts? Oh, okay. Okay. So he canceled the San Francisco trip. But they still have a trip to Scotland. Man. Me personally, like I said, if it's paid for, I'm going to Scotland. Look, I'm letting her know we're done. You know what I'm saying? You have fun. We have fun. You do what you do. Look, we're not a we're not a couple. We're not in a relationship. But let, let's just enjoy this trip and get it over with. I wanna I wanna <laughs> I wanna sightsee. I wanna travel. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Said, nope, go by yourself and be sure she knows it. Edit, you know she was already effing that guy when she was asking for the open relationship, right? Thank you. Absolutely she was. She When she came to you and asked you, hey, can we just have an open relationship? Um, I kind of want some freedom. She already smashed. She wasn't planning. She, was, she had already smashed. Someone said, go on your trip, sure, but don't meet her, bro. They always come crawling back when they lose that source of attention. And it sounds like that's all she wants from you at this point. Practice self-respect and make healthy decisions, King. Absolutely. Honestly, this relationship and your contact interactions with her seem really immature. Go no contact with this girl. And find someone who shares your values and wants to be with you. This girl is not that person. Say goodbye and never look back. Absolutely. Someone says, go have fun. And when the trip is over, so is she. I agree. Like I personally, just me personally, man, I can go on the trip. And if she, we, if we both paid or whatever, we both are supposed to go on the trip. I can go to Scotland with her. Cool. I'm not. We're, we're not together though. It, it's it, look. You made your bed. It is what it is. All right. We're done. I don't like you. I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna be buying you food and paying for anything for you. No. No, but this was already planned. Let's just whatever. Let's just knock it out and get it over with. I want to. I want to see the world. I got a chance to go to Scotland. I'm going to Scotland. I'm not not. I'm not stopping because you decided to sleep with your roommate. Like no, <laughs> we're just not going to be together. Someone said, "Look, man, she did the thing. She's having a full fledged affair with her roommate. What more do you need to show you where you stand in this relationship?" Man, make it clear to her it's over and cancel that trip. I'm not canceling the trip. I'm sorry. I'm not canceling the trip, especially if I can't get my money back. Or better yet, change the destination and take a nice vacation for yourself. I know it seems hard to let go of her right now, but it's been 10 months only. One week, two weeks max, and you will feel just as normal as ever. Don't let what if thoughts haunt you. She already did the what if. He replied to that and said, thanks, dude. That's encouraging. Yeah, it's so difficult to let it go now. I wish I could have done something different, said something different, etc. Wish I could have made it work. Nah, forget that. It's over, dude. She did you a favor. Someone said, why would you even consider this? By the way, good thing you snooped. He replied and said, a part of me wants to see her still. A part of me wants to do the trip and a part of me craves what I'd lost. Okay, okay. Now, now this is why it's a bad idea for you to go on the trip. If you still crave this woman and you still want the relationship, it's a bad idea to go on the trip with her. 
That's the truth right there. If you crave her still and you still are hoping for a relationship, do not go on that trip. At least not with her. Do not do it. And this guy down here is saying, don't have sex with her. No. So now that now that it's understood, he's in the comments. Now that it's understood that he still kind of craves a relationship with her and he wish it would have worked out. I would recommend you do not go on that trip with her. It's not worth it because she could possibly manipulate you and trick you into believing that she loves you. When she really just wants to use you. Don't do it. She probably just wants you to pay for things while you're on the trip. Don't do it, man. Dang, man. Now, now that I'm seeing you comment here in the com in the comment section, bro, if if you cannot go on this trip by yourself and she has to somehow be there with you because I don't know, you split you split it or whatever, you got I guess you got to take the loss. Don't go on that trip with her. And if you do go on the trip with her, you guys are getting separate hotels. You're, you're not even going to be around each other. I'll see you at the airport on the way back. Screw that, man. Screw that. Don't spend any time with her. You need to be away from her and realize that she, she did you a favor. Guys, I'll put the link to this in the description like usual. Let me know what you think about this. I'll catch you guys at the next one.